to introduce our speaker from um, Casablanca in Morocco. She is the president of the Association Montessori Morocco and signed the agreement in 2016, two years ago. She runs a Montessori school and supports an orphanage and has been working a lot in rural communities in Morocco. And she's also responsible for leaving you a strange, mysterious gift on your table. So maybe she'll explain what that is because I don't even know. <laughs> Thank you, Aisha. Thank you, Candice. so many of you for all these years and I still don't know your names, many of your names, just as I know probably many of you don't know mine. I think this is true for many of us. We know one another probably even less than we know our respective countries. We as societies are those who cultivate the legacy of Dr. Maria Montessori in each of our minds. And each year we gather here, we sit on these desks carrying our flags, we introduce ourselves with our names and the associations we represent. But despite our proximity during these yearly gatherings, I feel isolated from each of you. Kind of the same isolation I feel in my territory all year round. It seems to me like we are all individually cultivating our own parcels of land. And I believe this is how our impact is dispersed. In the many years we've crossed, why have I never spoken to you? Why have I ignored the opportunity to get to know you? What has been stopping me? Was it apprehension? Perhaps I was impressed by many of you. As Wendy was saying, some of you are giants. And some of you speak languages that I, I don't know and come from cultures that are unknown to me. Or perhaps I was just being my introvert self because I happen to have my small circle of friends here who make me feel safe. But how was I not seeing the value of our connection? Society has programmed me. My internal code has created barriers within me to perceive all of you more in your roles than as other human beings. But I'm realizing today that we only reach our potential as leaders and amplify our impact if we connect. Because within each of us, are a myriad of experiences of hidden gifts for all of us to uncover. It is time we all cast some light over our brains, analyze our internal processes, what experiences are built into our programs, who was behind them and why. Some coding in our brain is keeping us from connecting. But our brain is not hardwired. In fact, science proves its plasticity. Our brains have the capacity to break our codes and to grow. Similarly, the title of my speech today was not hardwired. I was expected to speak about a rural initiative we were eager to launch back home. So this was the title you might have been expecting. But a few weeks ago, I started feeling confined within that title because I realized that that initiative was just one isolated parcel of the bigger picture. Just as Maria Montessori inspires us to connect the children with the broader picture before accessing the details, I chose to connect with the broader theme behind my title. As impact became my goal, I simply removed the confining adjective, broke the boundaries, and empowered 
my initiative. My initiative today is to inspire our connection as societies in order to strengthen our impact as a local community. I will start by using my story to illustrate to you why I believe in connection, how Montessori philosophy became my guide, as it helped me decrypt my code and find connection with my inner child. I was born in a family of strong values where education was a priority and excellence was a standard. As the youngest and the only girl in my family, I was in full admiration of my two older brothers. I was grateful to have been part of a community, school community, where students, parents, administrators, and teachers were felt like one big family. But I never questioned the educational model I was receiving. The fondest memories I have growing up are those when I felt I had purpose in the service of a whole. This is why individual sports, unless they were relays, were nowhere near as exciting to me as team sports. Those volleyball, soccer, and basketball games were when I thrived and revealed the best of myself. Only when I had the privilege of attending Brown University did I start questioning the education I had experienced. Brown had a very liberal environment that valued diversity in all its fascinating forms, where there was no predefined curriculum and grades had become a choice. So for the first time in my life, I was free to search and create my own path. That's when I became conscious of the nonsense of standardized curriculums and that grades were a distorted illusion of failure and of success. And therefore, that the conventional model of education, no matter what form, language, or identity, was a human trap. That conventional model is the reason why I had no clue who I was or what it is I wanted to do with my life as a young adult. Interestingly, I chose to challenge myself and I majored in computer science. I also enjoyed cognitive science, nutrition, and learning a new language. My choices back then indicate to me that I was seeking to understand how the body is fed, how the brain works, and therefore how to program anything from computer software to the human code. Upon graduation, however, I was still filling and following my transcript on the search to find the common job, a job which I got. I got a job where I was isolated in front of a computer all day, every day. After about a year, I could not bear going to work anymore, so I quit. Two years after that, I was about to have my first child still jobless and thinking about the education I wanted for her. I had heard about Montessori, whose values resonated within me and whose logic spoke to my scientific mind. I found no Montessori schools in my region, so at first I had no idea where to start. My own research took me to AMI as the original voice of Dr. Maria Montessori. Unfortunately, I couldn't get the training, but my curiosity drove me to see it in action. My journey began when I visited an AMI school in, in Washington, DC. I was inspired as the peace transpired both inside and outside of the environments. I felt the power of that higher state of humanity and consciousness that I had read and researched so fervently about. I knew AMI Montessori was what I wanted, not only for my own children, but for the people in my homeland of Morocco. Despite my society's rigid and conformed view of education, my zero local resources of AMI trained teachers, my own friends and family skepticism about Montessori being too extreme and that it would never work, and also that I had no background or experience in that matter. But I was determined to take the risk. I knew I was going to give it my best and that I was gonna find solutions to my challenges and nothing or no one was going to stop me. But the totally unexpected happened to me. I suddenly realized I was not in school anymore. I was vagabonding in the realities of life and faced with my unprepared self as a leader. I had trouble with relationships, decision-making, responsibility, and structure. 
To top it off, I had no management skills, and I dreaded dealing with people because I didn't really understand them. Facilitating meetings and public speaking were my worst nightmare. Although physically present in school every single day, I was hiding. Less than two months after the grand opening of the school, on October 21st, 2011, my entire staff, I repeat, my entire staff went on strike and shut down the school for a day. The entire community was shattered. My staff, the parents, and even I had completely lost trust. I felt like broken pieces. I had humiliatingly failed and was ashamed to have become my city's gossip topic, both for myself, but especially for Montessori that I was representing. This has been the most painful experience of my life, but I made my failure meaningful because instead of quitting, I used what I understood of Montessori education to go back and analyze what exactly had led to my failure. I came to realize that I was utterly disconnected within myself. My code needed major revision. Fortunately, revising code and computer programs had been something I was trained to do on all those never-ending sleepless nights in Brown's computer sun lab. So I began my, began my revision by comparing Montessori education to the education I had received. In my daily routine as a child, I was passive and was programmed to do what I was asked. I was stripped of opportunities to make decisions for myself and have meaningful experiences. I had no consistent platform for my emotions and opinions to be heard. I had no choice, no responsibility, or no voice of my own. I realized I had been the pure product of normative and conventional education. I had fallen into that vicious trap of the simple yet powerful concept of praise and reward. I worked very hard, not for myself, but to make my parents and my teachers proud of my grades. I acted more by apprehension of judgment than by free will. So I deviated from my true norm as I converged towards society's norm to fit the standards. My drive was completely disconnected from me, so I had therefore created a shadow at the expense of crafting and revealing my own unique self. As I did not learn to connect with my feelings, to think for myself, and to trust my instincts, my code could not compile. I had been formatted to fail. At that point, I was at my lowest, and I realized that I related to that non-normalized child who feels passive, lost, and dependent. I had seriously considered quitting, but instead, I seized my failure as an opportunity to face myself, to question who I really was, and plunge into my most intimate journey of self-realization. My turnaround happened when I applied Montessori's powerful concept of normalization to myself, when I understood that my way out was to set myself free from society's norm and embark into the true norm one could aspire to achieve. Instead of blame, I chose to reconcile with both myself and with my staff. I chose to accept what would happen to me. I chose to stop being a victim of whatever coded patterns and behaviors I was used to and take hold of my life. I then took this analysis to a higher level by applying the concept of the normalized child to the normalized community. As I realized, my school community was just a community of human beings who had failed to function together. So how to take my community from crisis to peace? My advantage was that I had experienced both extremes. I had witnessed the magic of Montessori within authentic environments of children. On the other hand, I also had witnessed the chaos and how terribly wrong and dysfunctional a community of humans can get. I realized I was seeking to manage an inexperienced, multi-age, multicultural, multi-personality group of human beings in an unprepared environment. 
they went on strike because just as I felt insecure, they felt insecure. They had been set free without a coherent structure. I had not been that strong, enlightened guide they were in need of. Just as I had not clarified my own identity, the school I had founded could not possibly have one. If I knew that if I wanted a prepared environment, I had to start with myself. I chose to create change from within, to reprogram my drive to be that normalized child who knows who she is and who acts in the betterment of her life and that of her environment. I stopped trying to be some other leader that may have inspired me and decided to be true to myself and find integrity. This is how I broke my code and found connection. I connect with my values, I connect with my dreams, and I create vision. I hold true to my standards of excellence and culture of collaboration and my mindset of continuous self-evaluation, and I create mission. I connect with trust, I connect with talent, I connect with minds, and I select my staff. I choose not com to compete, I am inspired. I choose not to blame, I understand. I choose not to limit, I open. I choose not to control, I guide. But the beauty of it all is that I thrive at being just another child in our environment. I choose to nurture just as I choose to be nurtured myself. My greatest sign of success is that together we feel empowered to create and to innovate. That vibe I relish in normalized community of children reigns within our organized community of adults. Meeting after meeting, I sit back and observe and appreciate. Profound respect and admiration for one another. Trust as we seek each other's help as we offer our own. Humility as we share experiences, challenges, and successes. Beautiful initiatives and creative solutions. I see through our eyes and into our souls our passion. That passion that shakes society's constructed limits away from our minds reconciles us with the spirits we once knew and frees our potential. Together, we work with integrity to apply Montessori as a human science within ourselves, in and outside of the classrooms, in and outside the schools, in spite of our diversity in age, race, culture, language, or belief system. Encounter after encounter, as we cross, we smile. As we listen, we understand. As we talk, we share. As we help, we hug. As we struggle, we laugh. Although I know we are still on our path towards normalization, I am proud to recognize that our community represents Montessori with such dignity. Moment after moment, day after day, I reconnect my thoughts and my dreams. I ask myself, am I connected with my heart, my mind, my body, and the world around me? Am I making wise choices? Am I mindful about using my senses and my resources to their utmost potential? What is important to me is not my grade anymore, nor anyone's judgment of me. Because life is not an exam, but an experience. My vision as a human being is to be connected with myself and with the world. My mission is to savor life's magical experience. Life is about connection. Genuine connection stems from pure admiration for multifaceted diversity. It has the power to empower our movement, if only we create space for it. I believe that if each and every one of us sees the value in each and every connection we can make, impact there will be. Impact for each and every one of us as we are the seeds for a more united local community that will become the roots for more strengthened leaders that will collect the fruit and plant their seeds to take roots within their lands. Our seeds are not only children, parents, school administrators and teachers, but any human being. It is time we unite to break the code about Montessori being a method of education for children because Montessori is far beyond a simple method of education. It is a human science that transcends all borders of age, race, 
and error. Oops. When applied in its exact science to any individual or organization, Montessori ignites connection and lets the magic happen. My heart tinkles with hope for mankind when I imagine this elevation of consciousness being achievable within any organized community of human beings, whether they're children, families, organization, or the greater society. Anywhere, anytime. But the time is now. If we want impact, I believe we must use AMI's amazing resources and our beautifully prepared environment. Nothing more, nothing less. So today, I choose to, be, to stop being that passive child in front of my desk, waiting for instructions alone, and not allowing myself to look into all the treasures happening on yours. I choose to believe in all of our inner children, your inner child, who is curious and spontaneous, who shares and helps, who inspires and laughs, who loves and connects. Only that child will allow us to think deeper about ourselves and empower us to break our codes. Only that child will shatter any limiting preconceived barriers and boundaries to build true relationships. My initiative is to inspire us all to be those children, to connect, and empower our local community of societies in order to impact. My greatest honor is to belong to my genuine Montessori community back home. I would certainly not be standing here today if it weren't for the many diverse and unique treasures that I have in my community. From those born in the 1940s to those born only last year, from lands so distant, in so many fascinating dimensions, speaking our own languages, wearing our beautiful cultures, committed to our ever so different beliefs, each on our own path. Within a genuine Montessori environment, diversity becomes our strength. It inspires and therefore empowers as we connect to create, to innovate. We are fueled with hope for a meaning, more meaningful world. And I would like to thank my friends and my family who have been patient and accepting of my dreams. I am afraid I am experiencing their ever so recurring fear of what happens after Montessori. My response is that I don't know what will happen after anything. Neither do any of us. Life alone will tell us. But what I do know is that before Montessori, I was disconnected. After Montessori, I found connection. This mindfulness is what gives me strength to face whatever it is that happens. I still have much to learn about Montessori, especially from all of you. In fact, I am eager to finally experience my first AMI training back home in my country. And I feel blessed to have found a trainer and a course assistant I admire for their level of humanity and consciousness. But most importantly, I am filled with gratitude for AMI's prepared environment, along with meticulously preserving our legacy and training beautiful models for our children. AMI gathers us and creates space for us, for us to create. They support our initiatives and give us a voice. And AMI's uplifting spirit stems from its leaders. Since I hopped in back in 2011, Andre and Lynn, you have been and continue to be such inspirations for me, each in your own unique way. But I was most enthused that you offered me a place since the very first day I knocked at your door. As inexperienced and clueless I was at the time, I'm grateful that you felt my passion more than you looked into my resume. Thank you. I remember the transition between Andre and Philip. Philip is unfortunately not here today, but I will still honor his presence by sharing with you an anecdote and speaking to him just as if he were here. When it was announced that you were going to be the next president of AMI, I knew and admired Andre, and I didn't know you yet. Quite honestly, I felt for you. But after your very first AGM as president, 
I remember telling you that Andre's shoes were very big for you to fill, but it turns out that your feet were just as big, <laughs> although very different. <laughs> Thank you for making us laugh the way you do and inspiring us too in your own unique way. You are sorely missed this weekend. Just as you are with us in spirit, we are with you. And last, but certainly not least, I would like to honor the brilliant mind of Dr. Maria Montessori, as she is the genius seed of our movement. I would like to applaud all of us who relentlessly carry her legacy and to reveal our trapped humanity for a more peaceful world. My initiative and the title of my speech, finally, is Break the Code. This is why you have your little packets. And this weekend, I would like to get to know all of you, just as I hope that all of you get to know each other. Our passion already unites us, but that's not enough. Let's attempt to break our codes and to connect. That's where the magic is. That magic will bring impact to our community and empower our movement. Thank you. <laughs>